Alex Steiner from Conestoga Valley High School here at uh, the LL League Media Day. And Coach Nick, uh, how do you plan on using me differently in the offense this year? Oh, I actually might you let you pass more than five times a game. It depends on how this interview goes, if you even get on the field, though. <laughs> you know, last year you had a running back, Kevin Kelly, that was fantastic, and you had a strong offensive line that you put together. I'm going to talk to these two linemen here in a second about that. But talk about who replaces Kevin at running back this year, because you've always been pro running back. This is, you think it starts there. So how's this offense change this year? Um. To be honest, I think the offensive line is stronger than it was last year. Um, I have three guys returning, actually four if you count a tight end that started half the season. Um, so I think the line is going to be a lot stronger than it was. And as far as who's going to play a tailback, right now there's three or four different guys that are in the mix, and the problem is they're all pretty good. Um, we'll see how it goes through camp and the scrimmages and see who comes to the surface. One of the things that impressed me, I'm a CV grab myself, I'll admit it. I was at a couple of their games just as a fan, and what I really liked last year, Coach Nick upset Hemfield at CV, and during one of the timeouts, he didn't go over and talk to his quarterback or running back. He went over and congratulated on the field during the timeout and pumped him up, all of his linemen. And I thought it really said a lot about where this team knew his bread and butter was at, which was up on the line, and he built that line up. We got two of the guys here. We got Travis and Cole was 76, and 67 is a uh, – is uh, Travis, um, two of the guys you have back this year. Uh, tell me a little bit about these guys and who you got back on line because I think you went from a team that was struggling and even struggling the offensive line, and you built these guys up pretty good last year, and you're going to be able to carry it over this year? I think so. I mean, like I said, I think we're going to be a lot stronger up front. Uh, Travis played, uh, played guard for me last year, sometimes played tight end, sometimes played fullback. Um, I believe he's 25 pounds heavier than he was last year. Muscle, right? Muscle. Uh, and he's also verbally committed to Akron. Um, Cole, Cole is, I think, a little bit heavier than he was last year. He's probably about 260 last year. Now he's 270, and I'm not sure his shirt's going to make it through the season, though. <laughs> Looks a little snug. But Cole was the Cole played guard last year, and this year he's getting moved over to tackle. I'm actually going to play Travis and Cole beside each other. And another returning turn to be Tyler Good was actually a sophomore guard that played a great deal because of so much that I did with Travis moving him around that Goody got on the field a lot. So he's almost having another starter. And then my tight end, Travis Shurick, he started half the season because Joel Lapp was hurt for half the season. And he's returning, so I feel pretty good about it. Um, and a lot of the reasons why I, I mostly talk to them is I have a quarterback coach, and I try not to speak to the quarterback. It's kind of a different kind of a mentality, quarterback in line. Um, so it's easier for the quarterback to only talk to one person. Makes a lot of sense. Now, CV in the past, Contafio would be talking to the quarterback. And Jerry Novak, who was a defensive guy, he still was talking to the quarterback. So maybe this is a smart one right here, letting uh, the, the coach do that and then he talks to the lineman. Know your strengths, right? Alex, tell me a little about your strength in this offense coming up this year. Um, as you said, you got a couple guys playing the running back position. Where will the strengths be on the offensive side? Name me a couple names of guys that we should be looking for on offense this year. Well, like, like Coach Nick mentioned earlier, we've got a, a good group of running backs uh, this year. We've got three or four guys. We've got Derek Burkholder and Chris Milburn, uh, Anthony Williams, and even Jordan Stewart, a new transfer from Catholic, who, who could all help us out at running back. Um, and then we have Jared Platt, who actually moved from quarterback to tight end, uh, and he might serve as, a, as another force as a backside tight end this year for us. And then we've got um, Dyer Bryson, who is, is a really quick receiver, who, who got in on both sides of the ball last year. And we also have um, other threats like Chris Brown. He's another receiver uh, who runs really good routes. And, and we got a good kicker, Robbie, who's coming back too. And, yeah, so, so we've, got, we've definitely got a lot of tools, and we'll, we'll see what, what happens, you know, when the season starts and everything. Interesting. Only a quarterback would mention a kicker out there. That's interesting. <laughs> Let's ask the two linemen here. First of all, tell me about how, what, how Coach Nick the last two years has helped develop that offensive line and D lines because that has been a strength for CB last year. And I think if you're going to be good this year, that will be your strength again this year. So pass the microphone back and forth. But let me tell me a little bit about what Coach has done for you guys. And I'm also told, Travis, that you're one of the characters on the team. So maybe you could uh, talk about how you keep things light a little bit for these guys. 
Well, first off, uh, Coach Nix is great with the offensive line. Um, offensive line, defensive line play is all about repetition and muscle memory, and our individual period that we do every day um, has made a world of a difference for us. Um, I think I mean, I'm doing things in a game that I don't even realize I'm doing. Like, I'll see it on film, and I'll make a correction. Didn't even realize I did it in the game, but because of our individual period, all the muscle memory and things like that, it, it uh, really works well. And it's passed it down here to Cole. Yeah, like Travis said, uh, our individual periods are really good for us. They uh, help us with uh, all our technique and all that stuff. And that's, I think, the year before, that's one thing we were weak at. It's our technique, and Coach helped us, you know, fine-tune it and all that stuff. And this year it's just going to be better and better. We keep keep making steps forward, no, really no steps back. So that's what's really helping us right now. Cole, talk a bit about Travis as a character. How does he keep things light for you? Oh, he, oh, he keeps us in line. If we get too out of too out of hand, he'll keep us in line. He's definitely a definitely a force on the field. He, uh, you know, when uh, we're all around him, we definitely feel his presence and all that stuff, and how he's a leader to us and all. He's a great football player, and he just he helps people out. He's not he doesn't get up in your face when you make a mistake. He helps you through it and all that stuff. He helps you realize it. So it's it's really nice to have him on the field and all that stuff. Helps a lot. It's your second year with CV. Um, you've got another year on your belt here to sort of know the talent around you, know the program. How much more comfortable are you with your personnel, your coaching staff, the players you got on this team, the program you're putting together now that you've got a second year going? Oh, it's, it's so much more, much more easy, I guess, with my staff because we never worked, the, the entire staff never worked together before last year. So they kind of get to know me a little bit more, and, you know, I get to know them, and it's a lot. A lot of coaching has to do with me not not having to tell them to do things. Um, I've always thought good assistant coaches do things without the head coaches telling them. Um, so once we get a feel for each other, and now they do the things that I expect of them without me pointing it out. And they're all real good guys, and they all work really hard. And as far as you know, getting to know, the, I've been a lot of different places, and after a little while, you get to know the kids, and it's it's all about the same but then as far as knowing cv i mean grew up there i know a lot about it so it was all pretty much um old hat for me last question how long did it take these guys to buy into your program what you wanted to do on offense defense but buy into your system um i'd like to say it was probably the first game um i think we were we were we had two rough scrimmages. We really did, I think, against uh, Bishop McDevitt. I think we might have had ten yards in the first ten plays. And against Governor Mifflin, we were struggling again there, and we just kept pointing out the positive things we were doing, pointing out the positive things we were doing, and it kind of put it together in the first game. And then I think they finally realized that hey, this may, this might actually work. Um, and I think it grew from there. I'm going to follow up with, with Travis. I saw you nodding your head about absolutely. When was it that you really bought in, or when was it you thought, you know what, we have a chance for a really good team? Because it was a good year for you guys last year. I mean, yeah, this this group of guys that we had last year and this year was good the whole way up through. Um, to tell you the truth, the, the only bad years were, it were the years that we had. We were 1-9 and nine in high school. But all the way up through junior high, all the way up through midgets, we always had good good years. And th- th- these were the two years that we were always looking forward to. You know, like these are going to be our teams. This is going to be fun. So um, I was anxious to move back to a running style because that's what we had done uh, the whole way up through. So I knew it would work. It would just take some time. I got one more question for Coach Nick. When you and I were at CV, it was that continual tradition was there. It was consecutive years of strong teams. It seems like CV's had it where they'll have one good year, like last year, and then they drop off for two or three years to rebuild it. How do you keep a program going consistently? You grew up in a program like that. You helped coach at a program like that at CV and Coatesville. How do you keep it going year in and year out at CV? I think you maintain it basically the off season. It's the off season part that, that keeps everything going. I mean, the seasons come and go, but the work that the kids put in from January till August is what, what keeps it maintains the program. If if you end up in the weight room in March and you've got ten kids there, you've got a problem. Um, I think we were pretty consistent. We were getting around forty, you know, give or take. But we had a number of kids. Strangely enough, I.